everybody. I'm Dr. Kat Fleece from Central New Mexico Community College. We're going to start here with the videos on the female reproductive system. Again, divided up into videos labeled by A, B, C, D, etc. In this video A, we're going to focus on the external anatomy of the female reproductive system. Let's take a look at this mid-sagittal view of the female's reproductive system. And just to get oriented, I'm going to point out a few structures that are internally located. So for instance, right here we have the bladder. The bladder, of course, is going to lead the urine into the urethra, labeled right here. And then the urethra is going to go out of the body via the urethral orifice. I'll refer to it as the UO for urethral orifice. Here we have the uterus. We'll learn more about the uterus in, other, in another video, which leads into the vagina. And then the vagina eventually leads out to the vaginal orifice, VO for vaginal orifice. And then finally here we have the rectum which of course is going to lead into the anal canal. The anal canal will then give rise to the anal orifice. So I, I labeled these three orifices to ensure that all of you remember that a female has three orifices. And from the, if we start anteriorly, A for anterior, and move posteriorly, we're first going to see the urethral orifice followed by the vaginal orifice followed by the anal orifice. Just anterior to the urethral orifice, we're going to have um, a little structure referred to as the clitoris, which is very similar um, in histology and anatomy to the, fe to, to the male's penis. So we'll point that out here on the next slide. The vaginal and the urethral orifice, these two orifices are surrounded and protected by two sets of lip-like structures, and that's what they are named. Um, they're referred to as the labia, for plural with an IA, labia minora and the labia majora. The labia majora have um, hair on them and sit the most externally, while if they are folded back, so if I uh, color them in, let's say, with, uh, with um, some, with this green color here. It would, they would be approximately here on this picture. Not the, not the best illustration, but the point, we get the point across. Um, the labia mi majora are hairy and sit more externally, while the labia minora are fleshy and not, fleshy colored and not covered with hair. And so they sit much more internally. Finally, at the level where the two pubic bones meet, we have uh, the pubic symphysis. And in us females, in the pub uh, covering the pubic symphysis, we have a slightly, uh, not illustrated too clearly here on this diagram, but we have a slightly elevated area, which we refer to as the mons pubis. That's uh, also covered with hair. And mons literally means little mountain, so the mountain of the pubis area. The external genitalia of the female can collective be, collectively be referred to as the vulva or the pudendum. And they include the mons pubis, the labia majora, labia minora, clitoris, all structures we have already pointed out on the previous diagram. And then we'll also add a region referred to as the vestibule, which includes the so-called greater vestibular glands or Bartholin's glands, mucus secreting glands the urethral, as well as the vaginal orifice. And finally, even though the hymen, which is um, located somewhat internally as it covers the entrance to the vagina, uh, we tend to lump it together with the external genitalia. So since we're talking about the hymen, it's really a just a partial membrane that in many females, is already ruptured by the time she has intercourse for the first time. And if not, uh, first intercourse will definitely um, break this hymen uh, to make further intercourse much more comfortable. Now, let's come back to our two lip-like structures, the labia majora and the labia minora. 
notice that both of these are homologous to something in the male. When we turn, when we use the term homologous, we're inferring that two structures have the same embryological origin. And so, for instance, and I'd like for you to remember all the different homologous structures between the male and the female, we find that the labia majora develop very similarly and originate from the same embryological structure as the male scrotum. While the labia minora are homologous to a part of the penis, and that is the ventral side of the penis. The ventral side of the penis is the side of the penis that faces the scrotum when the penis is flaccid. Remember that the minora are located more internally and are hairless. The clitoris is very similar to the penis in that it also has erectile tissue, it has a foreskin, remember that prepuce or foreskin mean the same thing. They are rich in nerve endings and therefore play a very important role in the female to reach orgasm. And so we say that the clitoris is also homologous to the penis. So that's already uh, three structures to point out that um, are homologous to the male's, uh, to the male's uh, reproductive structures. Finally, these vestibular glands, which are located in the wall of the vagina and who have ducts that then allow for their mucus-like secretions to moisten not just the vaginal canal, but also the vaginal orifice, including the urethral orifice, um, these glands are homologous to the bulbo-urethral glands of the male. Remember, they were also called Cowper's glands. So we have four structures in the female that have the same embryological origin as the male. As a matter of fact, all of us as embryos, we all develop first as females. And it's not until proper levels of testosterone kick in that an embryo will be triggered to start developing into uh, start developing male reproductive structures and the perineum or the perineal region of the body is recognized in both males and females and it's it ha it's a region that is in the shape of a, a diamond essentially and it's um, it's it's defined by the following points. So we have the coccyx area right approximately right here, the ischial tuberosities, which are the, the, the two bone markings that we sit on, and the pubic symphysis area, here referred to as uh, the pubic arch, which is more uh, the arc-like area right here. Once again, recognize the location and the order of the three orifices in the female with the urethral orifice the most anteriorly, followed by the vaginal orifice and then the anal orifice. Anterior to the urethra, we have the clitoris. And since it's primarily the external reproductive structures of the female that play a role in reaching um, orgasm, um, we can discuss just very briefly the female sexual response, which is very similar um, in whatever autonomic pathways that are used as in the, fem as in the male. Um, we're seeing that the clitoris becomes erect, that the Bartholin's glands start to produce enough mucus to moisten the whole vaginal area and the rest of the vestibule. And then, of course, the breasts also enlarge with the nipples becoming uh, erect. Another thing to point out is that, unlike males, females can have multiple orgasms. And please do not forget that orgasms are not necessary in order for a female to conceive. This wraps up video A, which focused on the external anatomy of the female.